YouTube announced four different monetization efforts, brand new things for creators, large and small, and I'm gonna take today to break these down, tell you more details than I already did in the short video that I released uh, on Tuesday, I think Tuesday, and I'm going to tell you what it means to you as a creator. We're going to have some real talk, and I would love, love, love for those of you joining me live to actually have that conversation in the comments as well. So the highlights of the, um, of the announcements are creator music, revenue sharing for shorts, a new path to partnership, and the YouTube Partner Program fan funding. So I'm gonna tell you all about those, what those are, so let's get down into it. Creator music, um, the number one, number one, probably number one most exciting thing about the YouTube announcements is creator music. Basically what this does is allows you to um, get access to popular music, really good songs supposedly. They say it is access to the best music on the market. Now, um, they have free options, they have revenue sharing tracks, they have paid options. So what this looks like, and let's just be real, we all know this at this point, you cannot stream, you cannot put content out there with um, copyright copyrighted music. You must have a license for that. And YouTube said, we hear you. We know that this is a real big struggle for all creators. And it is. It's one of the most popular questions I get here at Livestreaming Pros about music. And I have been recommending my favorite platform, Epidemic Sound, for music. Um, then you also have options like Stream Beats and Licked, Stream Beats from Harris Heller. Speaking of Harris, I'll be hosting a panel with him next week at VidSummer, so I hope you'll see you there. Um, and then Licked is probably the most like the YouTube creator music that you're gonna see because they're both going after um, popular music, popular artists on major record labels. Now, this is going to be available, all this stuff is gonna be like next year. Early next year is the start date for all of these announcements and then some of it will trickle out. So with creator music, I do love the fact that they're taking the um, the existing library that, real talk, not really great. Like the existing YouTube li music library is just not that great. Um, and they're expanding on it, right? They're trying to help you as a creator have access to better music, which is great. You just let's be let's just be real here you are going to pay some way or another for good music a lot of people come to me and say hey i want um i want great music i want pop culture music uh for free how do i get that <laughs> Don't. You can't. It is illegal, right? So you are going to pay in one way or another. With creator music, the cool thing is that you do have those free options. Those probably aren't going to be like the best of the best. Um, then you have options that you can pay per license per track. Um, and then also you have the option to revenue share with the artist. This is where it's interesting. And this is where YouTube's power comes into play to be able to make these types of deals. So you don't have to actually spend any money in order to buy a track or buy a license. You actually have some music available to you to be able to um, just select that and then what happens is that uh, video, whatever revenue you make on that video will be split with the copyright owner. So that's an interesting development in this space. Um, I haven't seen that option before on other options, right? Um, and so the um, this whole music pr um, progression is a really good one. This is, I, I think creator music is a great thing. Will I use that over epidemic sound, which is the thing that I always recommend? Um, we'll have to see. 
We'll have to see what kind of music they get access to. I like, because I, I use a lot of music, I like having 15 minutes, I'm sorry, $15 unlimited option. That is not something that YouTube has. Um, and I think that if they were to do something like that, as far as I've seen, they don't have that kind of like monthly subscription, unlimited music. Um, so I think that for my purposes, as long as Epidemic Sound keeps adding new and more um, music, then they're going to stay at the top for me personally. But I can also see the benefit of just per license um, for people who don't dance for 10 minutes and need new music all the time <laughs> during their countdown timer, right? So if you're not really using a lot of music, that could be a viable option for you. I'm sure they're going to get some amazing creators. They have the power to do so. All right, so let's move on to, oh, and by the way, I was going to say, um, you know, the Harris Heller's stream, um, stream Beats, that is free, right? Because he's create, he and his team are creating that content for you and license, giving you the license for it for free. Um, and so my personal, like, I don't talk about that as much because I actually like words in my music and there's more music beds. They do have like, I think one song that has words in it. But for me, when I'm dancing, I need like the words. So um, that's just kind of like my personal effort. But if you haven't checked, or my personal preference, if you haven't checked out Stream Beats, that is a free option for you. Um, and his team has put together a lot of effort um, to make that happen. Okay, so the number two, <laughs> uh, announcement from YouTube is revenue sharing for shorts. Now, what does this mean? So as you're putting shorts form, short form content out there, um, right now, as you scroll through the recommendations and the, the shorts feed, um, you just go video after video after video. What they're going to be doing is inserting ads in between the different shorts. To be clear, they are not adding ads into your short video. They're in between. So you've got one short, you've got an ad, you've got another short. And so people will discover those ads just like on TikTok. So just think about that experience if you've ever browsed through TikTok. What's gonna happen is they're gonna put all of the revenue from those advertisements into one bucket, into one, um, yeah, bucket, and then they're going to send out payouts to creators based on the percentage that they have pulled in view ratio, the view ratio, right? So if you get a thousand views, then somebody else gets 10,000 views, guess what? You're getting kind of a smaller percentage of that ad revenue. Note, it is per country, um, different countries have different ad rates. So just keep that in mind. It's not the same ad rate for every country out there. All right. So let's have a little real, real talk on this conversation. 45% of ad revenue is being distributed to the creators. And I have seen some comments like, why not 50? Why not 55, right? Why not, why give us the smaller amount when we're the ones creating the content? They did speak to this in the, um, in the stream, uh, the announcement made on YouTube, and I'm incredibly honored that they invited me to watch that uh, and be a part of the made on YouTube um, uh, event. And I also, I should say, everything I'm saying here today, I have already um, given that feedback directly to YouTube um, because we have we have some stuff to talk about soon. <laughs> We're going to get to that, okay? <laughs> so they said in the announcement, a lot of investment is required to make this happen, to insert those ads, right? So they they say, and you can choose to believe them or not. Um, I know that everybody has a little bit of skeptic, skeptic, skepticism when it comes to YouTube, um, but uh, they're trying to put the best effort into having the 
effort being put in to make it a long-term sustainable process and also give the creators as much revenue as they can. So, um, I, you know, I would love to see 50% of course, at least, um, but it is what it is. And there are lots of other platform specific revenue splits that are much lower. So there you go. Um, now small creators, this is reality. Small creators, um, are gonna get a very small piece of the pie here, right? So if you're creating short form content and you don't have a lot of subscribers, you are going to get a small piece of the puzzle. It is an option for revenue that didn't exist before. And anything is good when you're starting, right? Even if it's 10 bucks, even if it's a hundred bucks a month, right? And so as you're growing, I just wanna make sure that you don't expect that you're gonna be like making all this crazy money as a small creator. Um, but the more effort you put in, the more money you make. Larger creators, this is actually a really good thing for larger creators because they don't now have to make sacrifices before they have, you know, you have like, a video that's gonna get a lot of recorded video, a VOD, as we call it, video on demand, um, they're going to get revenue from that. And so they're making money from that video and the, the effort that they're putting into it. Short form content helps subscribers, but in the past has not really given them that revenue um, option. And so they, it's always been kind of like a tort. Do I spend my time doing something that's gonna make me money? Do I spend time that's gonna make give me something that is going to help grow my channel? Now, in reality, if we take a step back, that's business. <laughs> you always have to um, split your time making money and growing the external available audience, right? That is just business at its core. You're never going to be able to make money without doing the audience growth. You're never gonna be able to do audience growth long-term without making money. So I just wanna have a little bit of real talk there. <laughs> if, um, if you get frustrated with like where to spend your time, that's marketing, that's business. So just kind of get right in the, get in the right mindset for this, but large creators are happy about this now that they can spend time doing something that's going to grow their audience and actually make a little bit of money at the same time with that one piece of content. All right, uh, I just wanna take a real quick second. Thank you, Sahil, um, I appreciate that. I think the announcements uh, like YouTube really bothers people because it's a reminder they're a cog in the machine and the machine is gonna take its pound of flesh. I think that's a really harsh way to say it, to be honest, I get it. I know that um, people have this you know, kind of mindset around the platforms. We are using, if you can shift Shift how you think about this. Um, you are using the platform as much as they're using you. It is a hopefully a win-win, right? They are providing you an audience and you are using their platform to build their audience. So I think we gotta like calm down a little bit <laughs> when it comes to like, YouTube is just taking advantage of us, right? Yeah, there are things there that happen along the way where, and, and I'm talking about any platform, every platform has this kind of um, love-hate relationship or the creators have this love-hate relationship with the platform. And I get it. And I also think it's detrimental to your growth. When you say, I'm just a cog in the wheel, and I'm not saying you specifically, Paul, but uh, and this is a normal kind of conversation. When you say, I'm just a cog in the wheel, you're not gonna show up in a way that actually produces results. So learn the strategy, learn how to grow, and don't blame the algorithm blame yourself for not doing the things that are going to make the audience happy. Especially on YouTube, the algorithm is about making the audience happy at the end of the day. All right, so now let's get to the, the juicy 
the really juicy two announcements that everybody is talking about. Um, it is a symbiotic relationship, Angelo, if you allow it to be. Okay, so let's talk about the number three announcement, the new path to partnership. And this is where it got everybody really freaking riled up, <laughs> right? 10, in order to, they opened up a new path to partnership, um, basically as part of the partner program. Partner program, if you're not familiar, allows you to start making money on the YouTube platform through ads, through um, memberships, through all different, all these different options, right? And actually I can show you uh, all of those options. Let me go into the pip here. Um, so the partner program has, oops, sorry, has ads, has YouTube premium, uh, funds, merchandise, ticketing, YouTube brand connect, super chat, super stickers, super thanks, and channel memberships. So those are the things that you get inside of the partner program. And this is why people want to be in the partner program, right? As you start making money. Now, typically you have the requirements of a creator having to get a thousand subs, subscribers on their channel and 4,000 watch time hours on their channel in the last year, 12 months. This new path to partnership um, is 10 million shorts views. It's for short form content. If you get 10 million views in the last 90 days, you can apply for partnership versus the other way, thousand subs and 4,000 hours of watch time. And this, my, my friends, oh my gosh, this is everybody's response. 10 million viewers, have they lost their freaking mind? Every short you have to, have to do needs to go viral. You need to post about three times a day without getting about 30, with getting 34K views each. Now, this is where I think we need a little bit of real talk. Small creators are angry. Um, and even some large creators are like, okay, wow. But large creators already are in the partner program, right? So it's not really for them. Um, I, and again, I have already relayed this information directly to YouTube um, from the announcement. That was my first reaction in watching the Made on YouTube event in our private stream. I was like, whoa, like 10 million. Whoa, <laughs> that is not even possible. <laughs> and then as I kind of came out of it a little bit and reevaluated what they were saying, they just weren't, I think it, their message got a little muddy. I think that this is something that people are seeing as for small creators because your small creators are the ones trying to get to the partner program, right? It's not for large creators because they're already there. So when you have short shorts that you need that much, yes, it is hard. Yes, it is a lot. Um, I would have wished it come down maybe a little bit, but um, this is intended for shorts focused creators. And I don't think that everybody understood that. I think that um, that was the muddy messaging. This is for shorts focused creators. What does that mean? You are doing really only shorts and you're not putting out recorded videos, long form content. And long form content is like two minutes or longer, right? So long form content or lives, you're really just putting out shorts and putting them out there, right? Um, and Diana Gladney actually did a wonderful breakdown of what that looks like. <clears throat> so I would love to share her link on that, um, that the first part of that video was like, this is how many views you're going to need, right? So this is not for you if you're putting out live content. <clears throat> this is not you for you if you're putting out recorded VODs. Shorts focused creators cannot get 4,000 watch time hours. It's just not possible for them because it's a minute video, <laughs> right? So they're really saying we've got this path for people who are doing live VODs, 
live or VODs or podcasting or audio, right? So if you're doing those things, the 4,000 watch time hours and 1,000 subscribers is your path to partnership. If you are doing um, short form content as your main focus, you're gonna need 10 million views in the last 90 days, not yet, not even 12 months, which I think is a little harsh as well. Um, and you need a thousand subscribers. So you do always need to hit that thousand subscribers to enter the partner program. Why do they make this so hard? Because it should be. <laughs> like, guys, we know this. Those of you who are still here pushing through and not giving up are the people who are gonna get to the partner program, are the people who are gonna get success on YouTube. I don't know the current number on how many people are creating content on YouTube, but it's a lot. And if everybody were a part of that, there would be a lot more problems that we would be facing. So from a, pers from a, from a you know, top level perspective, you have to make it a little difficult to get into the program because everybody can't. Otherwise, so many other issues get unlocked. And this is, this is what we're doing inside of our accelerator program, which is not even open right now to new people, but this is what we're already seeing. I have broken it down to like what it takes to get to that 1K, what it takes to get to success on YouTube. And it's the people who are, we're already seeing people have success. We're already seeing people break barriers, which is incredible and awesome. But it's the people who say, I am gonna do what it takes. I am gonna show up and I'm gonna deliver and I'm going to just ride it out until I get there, right? Yes, thank you, Mark. Mike, never gonna give you up, never gonna lay you down. <laughs> so that's the real talk for today. I think, you know, yes, it's gonna be hard. Yes, it's gonna be difficult. Um, and it also gives you a framework to get creative. We are currently ourselves getting a little um, creative in our own strategy on this channel. And so we will, um, like, it's something that you never stop doing. I've been doing content for 17, coming up on 17 years. I always have to experiment. I always have to look at new ways to create content to fit within what's working right now, right? This kind of leads us into the number four announcement, which is the YouTube Partner Program Fan Funding. Now, the fan funding, what is that? As opposed to the partner program, um, <laughs> as opposed to the partner program, um, fan funding is where the, the viewers are supporting you. It has nothing to do with ads. It has nothing to do with um, tickets. It has nothing to do with um, brands or funds. It's literally just super chat, super sticker, super thanks, and channel memberships. As you're growing your audience, having the ability to actually allow your audience to support you is a wonderful thing. Now, you, the, um, what they said, and this is another part that I think is actually, um, I, yes, fan funding is already out. However, what's new is the new tier to allow you to make money earlier in your journey. That's what's the new announcement. Fan funding has existed for a long time. We use, Sammy was just putting out super chats, right? So we use that and we usually have alerts on, but I turn them off for this episode. <laughs> but they, um, they basically said, new tier coming to help you make money earlier in your journey so that you can have this fan funding. And then they left it at that. <laughs> like what? Well, that's the new tier, right? This was everybody's like, I was the same way. I was like, okay, right? And in their blog post, they do say more info coming in 2023. So they have not announced the details of what that looks like. However, they are specifically saying it is for live streamers. It is for shorts for long term, so, sorry, long form content. 
So if you're creating the long form content, just the regular YouTube videos, you're creating shorts or you're creating live streams, I get the sense that there's going to be a kind of a path to that, a new tier that will allow you um, to make that, to hit that goal of fan funding with fewer subscribers, but we don't have any information yet. And real talk, <laughs> that, I think this was the key component as to why the message of the 10 million, the shorts path to partnership got messy. Um, because without any information, what do we do? As human beings, we make stuff up. We fill in the gaps. We combine information, right? And so I get it. I get YouTube's hard job of relaying all of this information without muddiness. I know from experience, anytime I have a lot to share, you have to like break it down and get very specific. It's a difficult job to do. So I think that people basically got really confused and started piecing together information, having no information on this one, which new creators, small creators are super passionate and super loud, <laughs> which is not a bad thing, right? Um, but I think that it's, um, I just think, I think that that's why it got muddy and why people got really upset um, over this. So they are working to make it easier for you to start making money on your channel with fewer than a thousand subs and without access to the partner program. Um, yeah, rumors are saying 500 subs, but uh, that's a rumor. So I'm not gonna say anything about that even though I just did. But <laughs> this is a really important part of the conversation. You really need to have a multi-platform strategy, okay? so. This is something that I talk about inside of our accelerator program with our students as well. When people come to my channel, live streaming pros, they want to live stream, right? And I and 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 I will tell you this, on YouTube specifically, live streaming is not going to be um the only thing you do to grow your audience. It's going to be a much more difficult um path to success if you're only using live streaming. You typically want to use long form content and shorts for discovery. Right now, in this moment in time, shorts are being favored. Shorts are being pushed hard, right? Because of all of the efforts that going into it. And so short form content has the ability right now to really grow your channel and get discovery. Uh, long form content, again, like two minutes or longer, like, right? Because short form content is like a minute. <laughs> so short form, long form content is those just normal YouTube videos you're used to seeing. Those also are really good for discovery in a different scenario, right? A different type of person searching for that information versus the just scrolling through the feed. Um, then your live streams are really going to be helpful for growing the connection with your community. That doesn't mean that people can't find you through live. Um, it actually is a, a strategy that you can put into play for that, but you got to be very strategic about it, right? Okay. So <laughs> there's a lot to cover there, um, but I thought that I think like I, I didn't want to leave my coverage of this event at just the quick video that I put out on Tuesday, which if you haven't seen it, it just kind of like breaks down the information super quick um, in like four and a half minutes, I think it is. Um, but I, I thought we've got to have this conversation, just the two of uh, just the two of us. Yeah, me and you, me and you, the two of us. <laughs> um, and just allow you to ask questions, um, allow you to vent, allow you to be excited if you are excited. I've seen a lot on both sides, people excited, people upset. So, all right. Uh, YouTube realized what they had was really nothing and quickly came up with something, anything, and a new level came out. I, what do you mean by that? I don't know. Like they, I don't think they realized they had what they had was nothing. Like a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours is not nothing. Um, 
it's hard for a lot of people, right? Those first thousand subs is hard, but it, again, it should be hard. We don't want everybody if they can't stick it out, right? You've got to have some kind of um, qualification. And that is true. I think that people set aside YouTube or any of the other platforms as this brand new thing. When in reality, if you look at how everything is working, it is new as a way of making money ish. I mean, I've been doing it for 17 years, but okay. So like, um, it is new ish, but if you look at really the core behind the scenes, it's all the same business tech, same business strategies that we've used for thousands of years, hundreds of years. I don't know, <laughs> thousands of years, probably not thousands of years, but all right. Uh, it is 10 million views total um, in 90 days from all of your short form content. So it's not just per, per short. Oh, let me get back to Sammy. Sammy gifted five. I can turn on the Super Chats alerts now. Okay. Sammy, thank you so much for gifting five memberships to Livestreaming Pros um, people in the chat room. Welcome, welcome to all of you who are now a member. And also Sammy asked with a super chat earlier, should I be asking my people to subscribe when I'm doing my shorts? I'm gaining new subscribers from my shorts without asking, but should I start to see um, and ask? Um, so I'm getting the impression from all the conversations I'm having about shorts that call to actions aren't necessarily going to do you much good because of the time that you have. Um, are you doing 60 seconds uh, or where, like how long are yours? Um, and so what's happening is people are subscribing without even a call to action, which is very different than a long form content. So um, you, can tr you can always try, you can always experiment with a short call to action. Um, if you did, I would make it feel a little bit more like fun as opposed to, fun is a general term, right? It doesn't have to be like, ha ha. Um, but I would make it feel, you know, more fun than just a call to action. I know that personally, when I'm watching short form content, as soon as call to actions happen, I'm out. And I think that that's typical user behavior of this type of content. But if I like them genuinely, I'm going to subscribe because I know that I won't see them again unless I'll do either two things. I'll look at, I'll, I'll go to their page and watch a couple of shorts in order to tell the algorithm, I like this person. Thank you, Marcus, for the super sticker alerts are on. <laughs> um, yeah, you could you could try a visual call to action, but I think we're seeing a very different user behavior with short form content, and that is like, don't pitch me, right? Um, but uh, I I do like to tell the algorithm this is who I like. And then I subscribe after being after seeing it a few times. I may not be typical, but from everything that I've been having, all the conversations that I've been having with my YouTube creator friends, um, that's kind of that's kind of the the way it's going. Um, and so you can always try. Pay attention to if you if you do try a call to action pay attention to the retention. Uh, my last short got 100.1% AVP, um, but it was 15 seconds. And it's um, AVP, for those of you who don't know, is average view percentage. So um, basically that means that people are watching the whole 15 seconds and like one person <laughs> watched it again or something. And one person watched like half of it again or something. Um, but yeah, so I think that uh, you would want to pay attention to what is your current average AVP on shorts. And with that video, does it 
does it drop dramatically, right? Does it drop at all? Shorts are under 25 seconds. Okay, so yeah, just look at the data. When you are experimenting, you've got to pay attention to the data itself and what that is telling you. I have a video that I think is just fantastic and spectacular, and yet the data tells me it's not, right? <laughs> so so then you say, okay, well, what is that about? What is it about that? What is it, as soon as I see that drop off, what's happening right there? Don't do that again. <laughs> okay. Uh, it comes down to business philosophy. Is current business practice working and um, do good in the regular world or not? And if YouTube is using it for new business, it's bad. I think I need clarification on that. Hold on. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wait, we need a redo. Hold on, we're gonna do a redo. <gasps> Come on! Not sure what that means. <laughs> so, multi platform, not multi platform, multi format. When I said multi platform earlier, I meant multi format. Uh, I just realized I said that. But if you, but also, yes, if you're posting on multiple platforms, it might be harder since the verbiage is different. It, it can be very difficult. And also, <laughs> I need, I forgot to say this earlier. You really, um, you need to be aware of with YouTube Creator Music, there is no simulcasting. That license is not going to go off platform. So if you're going to use Creator Music, you are going to have to stay on YouTube itself um, or risk getting pulled down or your channel taken down on other platforms. Just so we're clear, I don't want that going unsaid. <laughs> uh, Zahil, how do you feel about the new monetization policy? Well, I just spent, I don't know, like 30 minutes talking through all of that overall. I think there's some really good um, things here. Uh, and I'm most excited about the fan funding option, but we don't have any information on it. So I just kind of have to wait, at, wait it out. A gif of what? What are we gifing? <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? I got the most dislikes I ever had on a video with my last short. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, if people are subscribing without saying anything, then that's great. I'm curious though, how many, um, how many people are actually subscribing? YouTube has the best revenue uh, as to compare, that's what I was saying earlier, right? Like a lot of the other platforms are lower than that. Um, I'm very excited about fan funding, don't care about the rest. You can always vent here. You can always vent, but I'm also probably gonna shift your mindset if you do vent, just heads up. Just heads up because I like us to stay in a, when you're in a, oh no. What button did I press the, oh, I know what I did, okay. I'm like, why did my overlays go away? Uh, it's because I I programmed the, the math thing weird. Okay, so um, what was I saying? Oh, I like us to stay as creators and as entrepreneurs um, in a positive mindset, no matter what happens on the platform. I have this conversation with my students all the time. Like, yes, the things are going to be hard. <laughs> things are going to be super difficult um, because that's just part of building an audience, building a revenue stream. Um, you can either have a day job that gives you comfort, that gives you security, and you're gonna have you know um, challenges there as well, or you can try this thing and you are going to see that um, tech failures happen, that it's hard to grow an audience, that, right, all of these things, but there are very strategic things that you can do to get there. Now, that being said, um, I just always like to kind of pull us all back into a positive outlook because with a positive outlook, you're going to see success. You're going to be motivated again 
to actually take the right action. With a negative mindset, sure, vent, but then get back into positive mindset, right? Um, but with that negativity, it's not gonna do you any good. It's just gonna like lead you down the path of a failure. Uh, failure is the only thing in failure is you're giving up, right? That's all that math. Oh, the math gif. <laughs> okay. I don't know what it looked like. Um, more dislikes. Reaching a new audience. Yes. Exactly. That is um, that is so, so important to, to realize. Do you think the new creator music will go add music for shorts? Yeah, they um, will add go music for shorts. So the my understanding is the music, um, creator music is going to have... Um, content available for shorts as well. However, um, there was something, and I actually forgot to get clarification on this. I need to do this. Um, they mentioned that, and maybe I misheard them, but what I heard was that in short form content, it doesn't matter the music that you're creating, that you're using. Um, and that felt off to me. So I need, to, I need to actually wrap back around on that. I will follow up. What was your very first video ever about? Um, did anyone like it? <laughs> so my first video was in 2005, and it was a breakdown of the five tech gadgets news. Te it was tech gadgets and news. Um, I called myself shiny, happy tech news. Uh, and yeah, it was just like, five different new gadgets or um, new things that were happening in the tech world. And yes, I think I think that one, that first video got 2,000 views, which at in 2005 was like insane. Um, but I was also like one of the early adopters of this technology of putting content out there. And um, YouTube didn't wasn't even really a thing at that point. Uh, they were just getting started. So uh, yeah, a lot of people liked it. And I quit my day job five months later uh, to do this full time. So uh, that, I mean, nobody had a, a choice, to be honest. Like it wasn't any good, but nobody had a choice but to watch me because they didn't have anything else to put on their video iPods. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I will just, yes, there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Now I need to see what face did I make? <laughs> I'm getting 10 to 15 subscribers a short. So basically that's 80 new subscribers this month without asking for subscriptions. That's awesome, Sammy. That is really amazing. <laughs> fans funding your shorts. Sounds like an OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, right? No, no, they won't. No, because we're not seeing that already. They won't. It's it's really about the right strategy to ask for that support, right? And so nobody really does anything. I mean, I'm sure somebody does, but it's not really a thing now, so I wouldn't expect it to be a thing then. Day job, not so much security as headache. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, let it go. <laughs> negative thinking attracts negative results. I got 33 dislikes on a short today, but I got 136 it, uh, likes. That is freaking awesome. More dislike new uh, equals new math equivalent is absolute numbers. <laughs> um, yeah, so even dislikes, and I think that we get hung up on people disliking our content, but um, I once had a video that it was, it was very disliked. Very, very, very harsh comments. Lots of thumbs down. This was before they took away the thumbs down. This was years ago. Um, people hated me. People hated it. People just hated the whole thing. And so um, I was told by my YouTube partner, um, uh, my person at YouTube, the partner person um, that man that helps manage stuff, like, do not take that down, don't turn off comments, allow the dislikes, allow the, the comments, um, because it's telling YouTube you're worth something. You're worth something. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we got, I don't, let me, how many views did we get on our short? I don't know. 
off the top of my head, to be honest. Uh, gotten about 200 news. Lala, that's amazing. That is amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> it seems, without realizing it, Shiny has moved through the years for me. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Shorts are amazing. Yes, my first and only, oops, sorry. My first and only is so strange, but I love it. My hippie friends get it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Negativity. I just love all your comments. Okay. Negativity leads to fear. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Whew. That's, that's powerful right there. Uh, hello, architectural. Uh, since we're on the topic, smash the button. Smash the like button. All right. Yeah. I don't have to ask. You guys always, you, this is the, tr the mark of a true community. Everybody is supporting this channel's growth and community engagement. Um, and I don't even have to say a thing. So thank you for that. I appreciate you all. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of shorts, yes, Callie's animations on her channel are incredible. Um, so you can check her out, uh, keeping your head up more good things that are happening to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, this year has been whew, amazing. Like we just wrapped up our accelerator program, complete revamp. Um, it's been just an incredible year of movements forward. And um, while you don't see that on the YouTube channel, you, it's in all of the other things that we're doing as a business. And it was just like, whew, um, it's been incredible. And I've been so grateful for this team, this community. We've gotten so many amazing comments from our students and from you guys. That video I was talking about was 50-50 likes to dislike. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. It was over 3 million views and it was my idea. It was. <laughs> Literally, this is a video <laughs> that um, Paul, like, I was, I was, I, I remember not having time at that time to do a video and he like put it uh, together for me and then just like, I went and shot it and um, <laughs> I don't know. It was a great, I, I thought it was a great idea, Paul. I thought it was a great idea and it wasn't the idea that was bad. Uh, it was something about the delivery. It was something about me. Just people did not like me. So I take all the blame on that one. <laughs> I, that's just my personality. That's, and that's the thing is like, you know, you're on to the right thing. If you, if as the years go by, you keep coming back to the same type of thing, right? Negative attention is still attention. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, let's see. All right, there you go. J do what John says. WWJD, right now. <laughs> okay, um, what do I tell strangers when I ask what you do for a living? Was it hard at first to say YouTuber? Well, I don't consider, I am on YouTube. I create, I am a YouTuber. However, I'm, I'm more than a YouTuber. I like, I, I guess I don't, um, there's, there's a, an involvement of what that word means. Um, and so, uh, what do I say? It depends. It truly depends on the situation. Like if I don't want them to ask questions because I don't really want to get into it with a stranger of like what I do, um, then I will say video production. It's pretty much my go-to answer if I don't want to answer questions because people don't really ask too many questions about that. Um, I'll just say, I do video production. <laughs> um, if I am feeling a little bit more open to talk about it, then I will say, um, it, dep it, de I, it kind of depends also. I have like a few different kind of go-to answers. Um, one of them is like, I, I help people grow their audience um, uh, through video online. I help people help others um, through their business. I, like, I have a few different ways of describing it, um, but I like to kind of get down to the core of what it achieves as opposed to, I have a YouTube channel and I do this and that. Because honestly, I just, I've been, I mean, um, I've been scarred a little too many times from people like then wanting to take advantage of, oh, you're a YouTuber. Let me, let me pick your brain. Right. <laughs> so I kind of take that out of the equation for the most part, to be honest. So, but 
Stranger, every stranger interaction is a little different for me. Yes, 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 yes. I love that one. All right, I'm so far behind on, I feel like I'm far behind. <laughs> uh. Nice. Ironing man says that he caught Kathleen's Remarkable too. If you're into the Remarkable, <laughs> then Kathleen is definitely the channel to go watch. <laughs> I guess we can always say we're content creators because we actually do create content sometimes, not just on YouTube, but other platforms too. Right. And I also think of myself more of a, as an entrepreneur using video to grow a business than just a YouTuber. So... I say online media company, that teaches them to ask. <laughs> that teaches them to ask, they do ask. Um, what do they ask when you say that? I'm just curious now. What do you all say? Like, fill, us, fill me in. What are your go-to answers when people ask? Like, <laughs> should Floyd, <laughs> I'm an amateur photographer, okay? <laughs> I have grown five subs this week to 129. Dude, congratulations. That's amazing. So cool. <laughs> Being vague is my conversational choice as well. I just, yeah, I just like, sometimes people just want to like have this huge long conversation. And those of you who don't know this, like I am actually an introvert. And I, I was telling, I was having a conversation with Callie about this earlier, um, like a couple of days ago. I, I feel like sometimes I don't know how to talk to people <laughs> in person. Like if I'm going to an event like Vid Summit next week, who's going to Vid Summit? Let me know. I can't, can't wait to hang out with you. I am speaking, hosting a panel with Harris Heller, with Stephanie Liu and Tiffany Lee Bymaster, aka Coach Glitter. Um, and so we're going to be talking about revenue and making money, uh, through live streaming and other video content. Um, so I'm super, super excited about that. But, um, yeah, outside of like at an event, I'm in my own world. Right. But like in the real world, <laughs> I don't know how to make conversation sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I feel awkward. So I'm, uh, cause I'm, I'm an introvert at heart. Um, my alone time is really important to me. So when I'm having like these long in-depth conversations about what I do and then people are trying to pick my brain, like I charge for that stuff, <laughs> right? So it just gets a little bit like too exhausting to me. Peopling is hard work. It can be. <laughs> I'm curious if anybody just loves being talk talking about that. I'm just curious. Yes! Whoop, whoop, whoop! Congratulations. You did, you put the effort in, you did it yourself. Um, I'm so glad that we could support you in your process as well. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> they leave me alone. Fair enough. Wait, I saw Dave Peterson say something else. What's that mean? <laughs> That's what I thought they'd say. What does that mean? Oh, you say you're a professional geek. That's a good answer. I like that one. People ask me what I do and I say, I work at a call center. <laughs> funny. On that subject, is there a way to use shorts to promo, say mixed cloud without a call to action? That Well, we were having that conversation earlier, right? You need to test whether a call to action is actually going to work for a short itself. Now, what does work is like kind of paid partnership types of things. Um, for shorts that feel like your normal content. So that's, yeah. If you're bad at talking in person, just let me let them film with the phone. <laughs> there you go. That would probably be uh, the way to go, I think. Oh, Vinny, I'm sorry you're having a rough day. I hope it gets better. Uh, my goal is to put that smile on your face, help you feel good. And that way, when you feel good about yourself, when you feel good about what's going on in your world, you can go tackle and you can level up. You can make crazy stuff happen. So I'm a people people. So peopling is my jam. That's awesome. We need people who are people people who peopling sucks. <laughs> we have a URL just for big brain, brain picking. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, I love people too. That's not to say I don't love people. I love people, but I'm more of an observer love people 
Um, but I, in my, in my work, I'm totally a conversationalist, but in my like personal time, I'm like, let me just go on a hike or go to the beach <laughs> and be quiet. <laughs> that, and that's, I think for me, it's like, I put so much out, um, and so much effort into what I do, um, because it is my life's mission. It's not just a job for me. It is my life's mission to support you in your growth and you making a difference in this world that I pour everything into it. So when I'm alone, I'm just like, I need quiet. I need to re reconnect with myself. <laughs> when I met you in London years ago, I remember having co great conversations about how I use tech relating to me having a disability. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and I think that you, I hope that you have uh, taken that and run with it. All right. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're late. <laughs> But we had a rough start, so I thought I'd hang out with you a little bit more. I do have a meeting here shortly, so I am, we're going to put our dancing shoes on, and I will be back at you. I believe we have a video coming out on Tuesday, and maybe even a second one in the week, <gasps> from zero to like two. <laughs> So look forward to new content coming out next week. And next Friday, there will not be a show. There will not be a live show next week because Callie and I will be traveling back from Vid Summit. But we will be hanging out with you. Member-only content coming from Vid Summit as well as public content. Uh, so keep an eye out. Put those dancing shoes on and let's dance this baby out. Go have yourself a wonderful rest of the day and an amazing weekend. Bye.